During the summer of 2004, an unfamiliar animal appeared in the Magothy River, a tributary of the Chesapeake Bay. With a flurry of excitement, residents began calling the Magothy River Association and the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. What was this tiny little mussel that encircled pier pilings, grew on lines hanging in the water, and covered the bottom rocks and shells? Had the river been infested with the zebra mussel? Samples were collected for identification. No, it wasn't zebra mussels, but the dark false mussel. To tell the difference between the zebra and the dark false mussel, we need to open the mussel. At the small or hinged end of a dark false mussel is a small triangular tooth. The dark false mussel is native to the east coast of North America and is commonly found in brackish water. A preliminary test and sampling plan was prepared and distributed to the members of the scientific community for comment and assistance. We present the resulting protocol, Community Science Dark False Mussel Survey. Time was of the essence as fall was rapidly approaching, with cooler water temperatures, higher salinities, and wind-driven tides. On a randomly selected pile, the normal water level is determined. A tape is held at this position as a diver descends to the bottom of the pile, recording the length of the muscle growth and the water depth. When the piling is in two or more meters of water, Muscle samples and circumference measurements are taken at one-third and two-thirds depth. For pilings in less than two meters of water, only one set of data and a muscle sample are taken at the midpoint. Divers measure down the wetted length and measure the circumference over the top of the muscles. With a standard-sized cookie cutter, the diver cuts a muscle sample. The cutter is held against the piling and the diver loosens the sample by working a putty knife under the muscles. Using the putty knife, the diver then clears a band around the piling and measures the muscle-free circumference. With the sampling work complete, the divers return to the surface and transfer the information and the sample to the surface support. A plastic bag is labeled for future identification at the laboratory. The muscle sample is placed in the bag with some water and stored in a cooler for transport. The muscle samples are taken to the Anne Arundel Community College Environmental Center Laboratory for analysis. The sample is rinsed in a sieve to remove loose dirt and mud. The sample is then placed on a towel and blotted dry. Once blotted dry, the wet sample is weighed. The weighed wet sample is dried at 105 degrees Celsius for 48 hours and then reweighed. Muscles are carefully removed and counted. The number of muscles in a unit area is determined and by measuring a population, the mean length was found to be 14 millimeters. No data on the filtration capability of the dark false mussel is available, but a study of the zebra mussel provided the filtering capability as a function of the mussel size. For a zebra mussel having a mean length of 14 millimeters, the filtration rate is 30 milliliters per hour. We use this as our filtration rate. Our calculations enabled us to estimate the number of muscles on a piling. We needed to know how many pilings were located in Cattail Creek. Members of Team Kayak inventory the pilings of 213 piers in Cattail Creek. From their inventory, we determined a typical Magothy River Pier has 21 pilings, 12 pilings in 2 meters or more of water with mussels, and 7 pilings in less than 2 meters of water with mussels. The remaining two pilings do not have mussels. We estimated there are 400 million mussels in Cattail Creek having a filtration capability of 12 cubic meters per hour. Using navigation charts, fathom lines, and soundings, 
We calculated the amount of water in Cattail Creek to be 550,000 cubic meters. Our final calculation, how long does it take the dark false mussel to filter all the water in the creek? 46 hours. Measurements of water clarity by Secchi Disc were made in Cattail Creek, Old Man Creek, and the river at Olmsted Point. Water clarity improved more in the creeks than in the main stem of the river, and water clarity in the creeks was better than that needed for underwater grasses to grow. We cannot say for sure that this improvement was caused by the increase in mussels, but we do not know of any other possible causes. We will continue to monitor the dark false mussel population in the Magathy River. The Magathy River Association thanks the people of the Magathy Watershed, the Anne Arundel Community College Environmental Center, MRA Team Diver, MRA Team Kayak, and the Ferry Point Marina for their help and support in this study. We invite you to join us. To learn more about what we do, please visit our website at www.megathyriver.org.